Hello again and welcome. Welcome. My name is Amy D. McKnight and we are in Lesson 5, Basics of Weaving. And this is the Epically Creative Richard Heddle Weaving Course, Module 1, Lesson 5. Alrighty. Now, in this lesson you will learn how to achieve consistent salvages, how to play with the bead, and how to add yarn or change your colors. Achieving consistent salvages. All right, y'all, I'll be honest with you. I really don't worry too much about salvages, and I really encourage you not to either. You're gonna get better at achieving consistent salvages the more you weave. It's kind of funny like that, um, a lot of the different things that we can get better at will totally come the more you weave. So thinking about weaving isn't going to fix it. Um, weaving will. Now, that said, if you use a weaver's angle, represented in this picture by the angle that happens to be going to the right, and if you're going the opposite direction, it'll be going the opposite direction, um, you're going to get consistent salvages. A weaver's angle is about, I think, it's a 30, 45 degree angle, depending on the thread. And as you weave, you'll be able to figure out about what the angle needs to be to get your salvages to be even. But again, it's one of those things that it's about weaving. As you weave, you'll be able to get a feel of what, it need, what you need to do to get your salvages consistent. All right, so that was short, wasn't it? Next up, a note on playing with the beat. So, a few puns in here. As in music, playing with the beat or the rhythm of your weaving will affect the cloth's feel or the mood. So, a heavy beat, as represented here, will produce a stiffer, denser, more compact cloth. Whereas, a lighter beat will produce a lighter, looser cloth that has more drape to it. Play and see what you like. Now, now we're going to look at really quick adding or changing colors. So what you want to do is you want to change it in the same shed. That is, if you're going to be finishing up a color or if you want to change colors, you're going to put the shed in whatever, be it up or down. You're going to run that color through, pull it to the back, and then you're going to run the next color through before you change the shed. Now, you're going to overlap that by an inch or two in the shed, right? And those ends are going to be poking to the back. And you're going to just let your ends hang to the back, and you're going to clip them later after you've wet finished your work. You want to try to do this in different spots so that you don't just have this, like, um, it's not going to be so noticeable. Although, as with most things, the only people that will probably know this would be other weavers, but still, it's useful to change it in different spots so that the eye doesn't, doesn't catch it as you're, if someone's looking. So, in this lesson, we learned how to achieve consistent salvages, how to play with the beat, and how to add yarn or change colors. Now, take action now. I'm sharing this information, not for you to just... Just like have it as just something interesting. There's, it's not going to be useful to you unless you actually do something with it. And I've tried to make it easy for you to do that. So I want you to weave along with me as I demonstrate how to get even salvages, how to play with the beat, and how to add and change colors. So let me tell you, in the, in some, in the next videos coming up in this playlist, you will find videos on each of those different things. So what you want to do is um, there, there's no sound on the video. Um, not even trying to mess with YouTube's music copyright issue. It's just silence. So you get to put on your favorite music and weave along with me. Look over my shoulder as I'm weaving and you'll see how I'm getting it done. In the next video, the next lesson, we're going to look at creative add-ins, hand pulled loops, and random yarn wefts. That's going to be kind of fun. Those are, I really enjoy all of those things. So if you haven't already, why haven't you <laughs> gotten the game board? Go ahead and download and print out the Basics of Weaving's game board and fill it out as you go. 
There is a link in the description of this video. And um, if you want to, if you're, as you're going through it, as you're sharing pictures of your work, go ahead, hashtag creative weaving basics so that um, I'll be able to see it if you're not in my community. But I would super encourage you to join my weaving community. It's www.myweavingcommunity.com forward slash join. And in there, you'll be able to share what you're working on. You'll be able to um, get together with other people who are going through these these lessons together. And, um, and yeah, it's just a really cool place for people who are aspiring creative and some people who are already super creative weavers to get together to to come together as a community and to just have fun around the information and each other. All right, y'all, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please give me a thumbs up on the video. I, I want you to leave me a comment. Let me know what you learned from the video and subscribe. Subscribe, please subscribe to the channel. Ring the notification bell. I'm going to be uploading more videos. In fact, if you want to know when I'm going to up upload the videos that show me weaving, you want to ring the notification bell so that you'll know when I upload the videos and share this video. Share this video. There is someone who probably didn't learn some of these things that would be super benefited by knowing this information. So share this video with a weaving friend or an, a new weaver and let's grow this community. Let's grow the creative rigid heddle weaving world. Um, yeah, please. It really helps the channel. And I really appreciate it. Alrighty y'all. That's it for this video. I will see you in the over my shoulder videos and then I will see you in the next lesson. Bye.